Hello and welcome to the Hobby Corner. My name's Kev and in this episode we are looking through the pages of issue 6 of the Imperium magazine. But before we get started I want to say a massive thank you to this issue sponsor Mr Gary Knox. You're an absolute legend. Um, because of you we have this issue to review but also we have the minis to build, paint and to play with. So for every episode that we do that involves content with this going on with the playthroughs as well you'll get a nice little shout out. And to anyone else who wishes to have that and wishes to sponsor an issue and support the channel, the links are down below. Just make sure that you leave a message along with the donation to let me know who it's from and that is for the Imperium issues. Now, moving on from that awesomeness, let's get back to Mr. Gary Knox's sponsored issue. So, issue six comes with three Flamestorm Gauntlet Intercessors, so intercessors, aggressors, um, easy to build minis. They do look fantastic though. Um, really quick, easy solution to getting some tanky units out that can deal a lot of damage to your chaff units that your enemy's got to have, like Hormogons, Tormogons, um, Imperial Guard, uh, you know, like Tower Warriors if you get close enough, that sort of stuff. Um, so yeah, they're absolutely great and they can really hold their ground as well because they are tough. So, and the detail on them, again, so much detail for the base, for the actual minis, the relics and everything. They're fantastic. Is it a bit disappointing that they're quite monopose? Yeah, but you know what? To get a unit built quickly and painted and the fact that you've got these cables as well, that would be a faff to try and do if it was a multi-pose. So, yeah. I think it's pretty cool and you're not missing out too much if you do wish to get yourself the multi-part kit then the alternative looks like this where you can have the frag grenade thing and of course the bolt storm gauntlets as well so they look pretty cool as well it's a different solution to a different problem but there you go so with that out of the way we also have the most important thing about this issue the base paint abaddon black which we will need quite a lot of later on so we'll put that to one side now on the cover we've got a fantastic bit of art we also got the aggressors attack paint with abaddon black and your most brutal battle yet so let's dive right in so primaris aggressors fire spewing titans clad in bulky gravis armor aggressors can soak up all but the heaviest of enemy fire though this Added protection slows them down, aggressors advance relentlessly, unleashing waves of fire from their flamestorm gauntlets to reduce their foes to smoking piles of ash. So these are really cool. It's kind of like the Primaris version of Terminator armor, aka tactical dreadnought armor, but it's not as tough. It's a bit more versatile. You see it used for uh, inceptors as well, the uh, the ones with the jump packs so um that, that it's used a bit more um but I, I like i like the additional armor and stuff um so yeah you got the funky armor which is really tough you got the gauntlets um and of course you got the ancient relics and stuff like that and then they got uh, the alternatives which they explain here the bolt storm gauntlets and the frag storm grenade launcher that's quite a mouthful to say um, and then of course you've got the little icon as well and then of course we have the battle record now if you do tune in every Monday live 9pm we do our little playthroughs but we also get to name the squads live as well so when we come to doing the playthrough for this issue I'll let the chat uh, come up with some ideas and then we'll vote on the most popular idea and that will become the squad name and the MVP of that unit as well because it makes it more interesting than using these uh, pre-selected ones which you can I mean they're still pretty cool ones so I like this because again as I've said in previous episodes it really personalizes it for you Necron Nobles imperious arrogant and power hungry Necron Nobles seek to restore their dynasties to their former glory they lead the Necron Phalanxes to war, directing vast armies of mindless Necron warriors and canoptic constructs who follow their orders without question. So um, this sort of goes into a bit more detail about who they are. 
Um, essentially, uh, when they did the biotransference, the main populace of the Necron tier kind of just became uh, mindless uh, automata, but the uh, the lords and the nobles, and then you know, going up further the hierarchy, they retain more and more of their personalities. They also got to sort of have a bit more of embellished armor, and you know, like the the uh, the android sort of uh, body that they they live within. Um, and all the toys that they get to play with as well. So the further up the chain, of course, the more uh, elaborate their uh, the skeleton is, and, and um, the the weapons they can wield and stuff like that. So um, yeah, that is pretty cool. A little bit there, and then uh, we got the nobles at war here. So we've got the Phaerons, literally top of the food chain. Um, answer only to the Silent King himself. Who is like the Faeron of Faerons. Um, uh, but they have the royal courts who sort of help run everything. So they rely on them to get things done. Kind of like your um, your commanders, you know. Uh, so overlords and lords are the ones that will get the stuff done. They're in your uh, royal court along with the... Um, uh, what, what are they called? Uh, along with a couple of others, uh, which we'll learn more about later on. Um, and then of course you got, uh, so they, they command, you know, the vast armies and resources and stuff. They get the war going. And then of course they've got the Royal Wardens, which are, uh, on the ground commanding the units into combat. They're not very sophisticated or intellectually superior, but they got enough going on in their heads that they can get the job done and do it well enough. And then we've got the catacomb bar, uh, command barge. Um, so it's just a way of an overlord just to zim along in, in combat and knock some heads off um, and get around real quick. It's also a great mini that you get later on. And um, there's two ways to build it. You can have it as the annihilation barge, which has got the big double cannon on it, or you can have it as the command barge. Either way, you don't have to glue this console down you can just actually sit it on top. There's two little pins there which hold it in place and then you can have your uh, overlord on the base as normal right behind it. And then if you want to change it up, you just pop them off and put the cannon on. Easy peasy. So um, yeah, looking forward to that one. Now we've got the how to build over here. So that will walk you through how to build them. Make sure you follow the steps because each piece matches a specific piece. So you don't want to get these um, cable bits mixed up because then some will be short, some will be too long. So yeah, make sure you follow the numbers. They're all clearly uh, put on the sprue. And then we get painting. So again, they don't tell you to prime because of, you know, untold reasons. But if you do prime, you can prime straight up ultramarine blue, uh, sorry, McCrack blue from a can, or you can go with a Abaddon black or gray even, and then start painting the McCrag blue on top. Um, and of course you got your lead belcher and Abaddon black bits to paint in. And then you go back to the minis that you've collected for the Space Marine so far and fill out those little details with Abaddon black. Then we got our playthrough fire support. Reinforcements in the form of a trio of aggressors have forced their way into Necron facility to relieve the beleaguered brothers. Having torn their way into the Necron facility with their flamestorm gauntlets, the primaris aggressors press towards the last known position of the Necron Royal Warden. It is their task to disrupt the Necron defense by destroying the android commander and depriving his Necron warriors of leadership. So that's pretty much uh, the setup. Um, you got until the end of round four to either uh, kill the Royal Warden if you're playing the Space Marines or keep him alive if you're playing the uh, Necrons. So I'd say throw those Scorpic Destroyers straight into combat as fast as you can. Don't let the aggressors get too much shooting on you because as you can see, their gauntlets 12 inch range and they do 2d6. Uh, hits so that's pretty nasty so that's why there is no um, ballistic skill here because that is your rolls to hit um, 
but you do have a weapon skill because your gauntlets you can use in combat as well and they have a minus three AP so that's pretty gnarly really does hurt so there you go there's the abilities flamestorm gauntlet shooting attacks from this weapon automatically hit the target the royal warden has a ballistic skill but doesn't have a weapon skill because of course you're going to try and keep him out of combat um so that's a bit of a shame but you know he's got his uh bits and pieces there yeah so there's new ability right here living metal it's listed down here this model regains one lost wound at the start of each of its turns and the score pit destroyers get that as well so that's pretty cool um you also nice as i said he hasn't got any attacks that's probably because you're trying to keep him out of uh combat but you, in four turns you probably could stay out of combat with the aggressors because they move so slowly at five inches and then we've got the scorpec destroyers their weapon skill only because they already got blades they haven't got any shooty stuff so they'll walk you through all of that which is cool um, you also learn about rapid fire as well in your shooting which means that if you're within half range of your weapons full range then you can shoot twice as much excellent so that turns the two shots from the gauss uh blaster into four dice sweet um and then of course you, you still work for your ap and all that sort of stuff and the saves and that so yeah that's like a pretty solid little playthrough there which we do every monday at 9 p.m bst time that's british standard time or gmt if you know it like that um and yeah and also you get you know like i said before you get to rename one of the units as well which is pretty cool so and lastly here remember it's end of the four turns if he's alive or not that's how you decide whether or not you've won or not on the back we have issue seven we got the uh, mechanicus standard gray and we also got the retributor armor as well we also got corex white which gets a lot of mixed reviews because it is quite a 50 50 paint sometimes it comes out lovely sometimes it comes out a bit chalky or chunky or even dry um so yeah white's notoriously hard for many paint companies to get right and uh, there's only a couple out there i know of that have done it so far but hey use what you got and of course issue eight this is a brilliant model i never got around to getting one so this would be great to look forward to uh, issue eight we got a necron overlord so can't wait to use that so let me know in the comments below what you thought of this issue um and of course of the monopose easy to build aggressors let me know what you think of the series so far and if you wish to support the channel all you got to do is like share subscribe leave a comment it's easy as that if you want to be an absolute legend like this guy mr gary knox then you can sponsor an issue just follow one of the links down below and make your donation and make sure you tell me who it's from and that is for the imperium magazine and if you want to go a little bit further you can go on and join the buy me a coffee membership like this absolute legend has and for as little as two pound a month you can make sure that you are sponsoring and supporting your favorite content creator where everything goes towards the lights the music and the good times don't forget every friday at 9 pm i'm also live where we have a nice little chill hangout session and get some hobby done and just chat about stuff so Thank you again for uh, watching. Thank you again to the absolute legend, Mr. Gary Knox, for sponsoring this issue. And uh, big love to you all. I hope to see you again soon. Until the next one. Peace.